Hello everyone, I'm Sybil Starr and I'm here to give the astrology forecast for the Virgo new moon, which occurs on September 2nd at 11.04 degrees of Virgo at 6.56 p.m. Pacific time. This is a very powerful uh, new moon as it falls on uh, 11 degrees, which is a master number. So it is a master teaching and it's a very powerful teaching. So first let us begin by looking at the chart itself. Okay. I'm going to screen share. All right, here we go. All right. So here it is. Here is the sun and the moon at 11 degrees of Virgo at 6 56 PM Pacific time. Now we have the sun and the moon, of course, conjunct and it's opposite Saturn. Okay. Very. Um, and so this is a very powerful aspect. Whenever Saturn is around there, it indicates a new level of maturity. Um, and of course, Saturn is also still in a square with Jupiter. It's a little wide to be with the sun, but we could say that it was there. Uh, some other things we're going to be looking at at this new moon is we have got, um, uh, oh, this Mercury. Mercury's here at uh, 23 degrees of Leo. And we call this a mutual reception. Uh, when um, you have a planet, like, uh, let me just restate this, is when two planets are in each other's sign. And this makes this especially significant because Mercury is the ruler of Virgo. So it's like the sun rules Leo. We've got, and so the and Mercury is in Leo and Mercury rules Virgo and the sun is in Virgo. So we call that a mutual reception and it acts kind of like a conjunction. And like I said, since Mercury is the ruler of um, Virgo, it makes it extra powerful. And this Mercury is in a square to Uranus. Once again, we've got our dear Uranus, Mercury's God of the mind. So some shifting uh, ways we view the world. Mercury, one of the meanings of Mercury is our perception of the world. Um, we also have Mars. Mars is here at 28 degrees of um, Gemini. Is in a square to um, Neptune here at 29 degrees of, well, actually they're just one, just a few minutes off exact, four minutes off an exact square. Uh, square Neptune here at 29 degrees of Pisces. All right, some other things going on that I see as significant is Pluto uh, has just entered Capricorn. Uh, it's going to be here for two and a half months and then go back into Aquarius where it will stay for the next 20 years. So we're getting this one last activation of 29 degrees of Capricorn. And of course, we also have Neptune at 29 degrees of Pisces. So we've got some very, you know, 29 degrees is called the anoretic degree. It's a critical degree. It's very important. And Pluto was also in a semi-square to Saturn. I haven't used semi-squares a lot, but I listened to someone, Rick Levine, talking the other day and talking about how important they are. But he said it's actually a magnification of a square. It's kind of more exact. And this is a really tight semi-square. And so it functions, it functions like a square, which is, um, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's a place of inner conflict. Uh, where we need to find some resolution and it pushes us until we do. All right. So anyway, let's start talking about, oh, one more aspect that I didn't speak of is the nodes of the moon. Uh, Venus is conjunct the south node and Venus is in her own sign. So that makes it, you know, extra powerful as well. Uh, opposite the north node here in Aries, which is coming into a conjunction with Neptune as the nodes of the moon move backwards. They don't move forward. So it's getting closer and Neptune's going to, um, you know, go back to, I think, 27 degrees. So they're, they're still doing a dance, the exact conjunction won't be until 2025 but uh anyway it's 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 coming into play now 
All right. And we also have Mercury in a trine to Chiron. So let us begin. Okay, we'll stop the screen share so I can just talk to you. All right. So what does all of this mean? Um, so first, we just like to start with the archetype of Virgo, since the sun and the moon are both in Virgo. And Virgo, to me, is the archetype of the priestess. It has to do with being mindful about recognizing there is no difference between the sacred and the mundane. It's all about um, our perspective. You know, this is ruled by Mercury. Uh, it, in ancient times, the, the constellation of Virgo has been seen as Isis, as Ceres, and Mother Mary. So it has a real goddess component. And she's, she's called a virgin. And the vir a virgin is important to remember the, the true meaning, which it means a woman unto herself who is owned by no one, free and independent who is owned by no one. And that's what the priestesses were. They were free and independent. They were owned by no one up until the the, the patriarchal shift started happening. And, and I don't want to just, uh, you know, say, uh, I, I, it's really a paradigm shift. It's more of a, uh, I don't really want to use the patriarchal, maybe just say a hierarchical shift and a dominator kind of a culture. And anyway, that is shifting now. But that would have been the old, uh, and that's kind of the old explanation or meaning of virgin is we just say, you know, sexually chaste that comes out of there, but it, that's not what it means. Anyway, back to the archetype of uh, Virgo. Virgo is practical and problem solving. Virgo brings skills of discernment, the ability to separate the wheat from the chaff, like what is significant, what isn't, what has meaning for me and what doesn't what is true, what is not true, okay? And that requires critical thinking skills. Virgo um, is ruled by Mercury, but it's a more, uh, whereas Mercury rules two signs, Gemini and Virgo. Gemini is more about connecting, getting, uh, receiving information, um, kind of a data, kind of just downloads. Whereas Virgo is more about what does it mean and what does it mean for me? So it's analytical skills, okay? And it's also a sign of healing. Many doctors and nurses have Virgo strong, but also many more alternative healers. I don't call them alternative. Let's say more traditional healers who work with natural forms of healing, such as food and herbs. Uh, but in Virgo, uh, as well as the sixth house, which Virgo Virgo rules, there's a very strong mind-body connection. It's very porous. So it's really important to, um, Virgo is known sometimes for being um, a bit uh, of a hypochondriac. And the truth of the matter is, I mean, the way I see it anyway, is that there's a real strong mind-body connection. And so if you're not feeling well, it's really important to look and see at your emotional body. What's going on there? Virgo has, carries a lot of worry. And as they say, you know, worry is a prayer to create something you don't want. So, um, and, and so anyway, and it can end up in like stomach issues, all kinds of strange stomach um, ailments. And often the source of it is the emotional body. There's worry, stress, concern, something. And so it's really important to become aware of that. So to release the stress uh, and also works, responds really well to herbal medicine. All right. Um, it's known as the god of small things and random acts of kindness. It Virgo, we have planets in Virgo. Uh, this is a life where you're learning humility. That's a really important quality of um, Virgo. And they say <clears throat> humility is one of the gates of heaven. Now, Virgo is also about self-improvement. And of course, that brings humility when we look at ourselves and see where we can improve. The key is to not take it in personally as though there is something wrong with you. That's kind of the, one of the shadows of Virgo is the desire for perfection. And when we don't meet that perfection, it means there's something wrong with us. Whereas the truth is, is that we grow 
through our mistakes. We learn through our mistakes and how we improve ourselves is by making errors. And so to not take when we see the need for self-improvement or we see that we've made an error, it's really important to be kind to ourselves and just say, this is one of the steps of learning that I needed to have. Um, and of course, the other one is the self-criticism. It's so important. There, there's an inner, um, inner self-critic very strong in Virgo. And when we're criticizing ourselves, it often spills out into criticizing others, or that's how it feels. So it's really important to know that it all starts in our own heart and to be kind to ourselves. I tell those who have, you know, strong Virgo, I'm one of them, so I'm living my own uh, teaching, um, is to turn off those old tapes of conditioning Okay. It's not really even us that is speaking. It's something outside of ourselves. And to let that go, turn off those old tapes and be kind to yourself. Now, the Virgo Pisces axis is very much about the victim savior axis. That's another piece that comes in. And I'm going to talk about that um, because there's a fixed star called Zosma. That is in, uh, it's a fixed star on the back of Leo. And uh, it is conjunct the sun today. It's also at 11 degrees of Virgo. And in Greek mythology, uh, this was the back of the Nemean lion with a, uh, that was crushed by Hercules. And so it can bring in the mentality of feeling like a victim. And of course, this is part of the uh, Virgo Pisces victim savior axis. And at the same time, we've got the this new moon opposite Saturn. And Saturn, like I said, brings up a new level of maturity and brings with it some challenges. And so one of the challenges that we need to look at may be that we might feel victimized uh, in some way. And uh, with uh, the sun opposite Saturn, an opposition, an opposition often brings in someone outside of ourselves. It's like someone outside of ourselves that is reflecting back to us a an, an actual part of our own consciousness. That's what oppositions do. But it seems like it's somebody outside, of, and it is. It is someone outside of ourselves, but they're really just reflecting back to us our own consciousness. But anyway, so it could feel like someone outside of ourselves is causing a hardship or restricting us or, feel, or re oppressing us in some way. As I said, oppositions are a reflection of what is going on internally that gives us an opportunity for personal growth, to be able to look at a situation realistically and say, you know, this is the reality of this situation, and then seek inner guidance on how to meet it. And once we take the blame away from someone else and can own it ourselves, then we have a path to healing and self-empowerment because we can't control anyone else. We can only control our response to what is happening. And so that's what this is about. And so there is also a need to slow down and go within to get the guidance we need. And another way that it could show up is a, a feeling a need to rescue another. And if you're feeling that need, know that it is time to honor their journey by being the witness to their journey with kindness and compassion, but that you don't have to fix anything. This is not your job. This is part of their life journey. Okay. All right. Now, as I talked about, you know, Virgo and also Pisces, but mostly Virgo brings in health. And but the Virgo Pisces axis is kind of like they're kind of like canaries in the coal mine. The energy field is very sensitive to the environment and what is in the environment. And so something that has come up recently and uh, I've always, you know, I'm going to say I've known this, but I'm also learning deeper uh, aspects of it. It's just how poisonous our food and water systems have become and that they are causing serious chronic health issues in children and adults. And so what we, we and to remember that we are what we eat and um, you, we know this is going on. Uh, we know that the regulatory agencies that are meant to um, 
uh, protect us are are not doing that. And they've been allowing in some really terrible chemicals in our food and we are slowly being poisoned. And of course, we're all very concerned about the health of mother earth, but it's, it's not something, we, you know, there are things we can do outside of ourselves, but the truth of it is, is that we are part of her body. So if we are poisoned, we are poisoning her, okay? So on a physical level, chemicals in our food and water, as well as processed foods are causing, are, are causing autoimmune disorders, inflammation, neurological conditions, cancer, and many other things. And to understand that much of the food that is sold here in the U.S. is not even allowed in other countries. <laughs> and we have the highest percentage of chronic illness in the world. And to know these chemicals also impact our emotional body and our thoughts, creating depression, ADHD, uh, um, uh, what is that fog, um, brain fog. I mean, so many different things. Okay. And of course, as Virgo and Saturn are very much about practical application, the question is, what can we do? Hmm. Sorry, I have a little throat issue here going on. <clears throat> I think the first thing we can do is always about starting with ourselves, you know, it's kind of like that, you know, in an airplane, before you put the mask on someone else, you need to put the mask on yourself. So I think we start with ourselves and many, many people do this. So if you're already doing this, bravo, great. But if you're not, it's really important to start reading labels as to what is actually in your food. And when you do, especially your, you know, your processed food, that's the, the you know, Processed food is actually, they take all the nutrition out and put chemicals back in. So what are those chemicals? Anything in a box can be, it's really important to read the, in the chemicals. Processed food has all of the, like I said, nutrition removed. Of course, it's always best to eat fresh food and eat organic if possible to know that the chemicals that are sprayed on our food are causing all kinds of health issues and water does not rinse them off. And it's also depleting and damaging the soil. You know, research what these chemicals are doing to your body. You know, the first place is to be informed about your food sources so that you can make better choices for your, yourself and your family. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> Saturn in Pisces also brings up issues around our water. There are many chemicals in the water that, that some filters that some filters can remove some, but not all. And the even bigger problem really is the denaturing uh, of the water through our public water systems through the treatments that they use. Um, it, it, it really takes the life force out of water. Spring or well water is best. Uh, but not everyone has access to that. Uh, but there's also some new technologies are saying that they restructure the water. The water is much, structured water is much different in our bodies because it actually hydrates us. Uh, without the structuring, it's, it's, we're becoming aware that it does not. And that uh, we need to add electrolytes to our water to actually get hydrated um, if we're not drinking spring or well water. Anyway, these are just some things to really be aware of um, because the, our bodies are, are, you know, they are the temples of our soul. It carries our spirit. And as I said, we're moving into an embodied spirituality and our bodies need to be able to hold the light coming in. Okay, and also our emotions also impact our health dramatically. And that is why we must feel to heal. Repressed emotions cause toxicity in the body. So it is important to really watch our self-talk as it impacts our emotional as well as mental body. Speak to yourself with kindness. Turn off the old tapes. Remember they are only old stories and conditioning. It is not the true you. And as we own our situation, we can then shift it through kindness and compassion towards ourselves and others. Virgo's about self-improvement, while Pis Pisces is about compassion, which starts with ourselves.
Okay. So during this process, be gentle with yourselves because the veil is falling in many ways. And I think a lot of things that we have not been aware of are coming to the surface. All right. So, and here's where I want to speak to that. So the Sabian symbol for this new moon uh, uh, is a bride with her veil snatched away. So this symbol implies the issue of unveiling oneself in some way. Can no longer hide behind a pretense or hide your light as the veil is coming off as to who each one of us are, remembering our own true divine nature. But it's also the veil, it's the veil of illusion that allows us to see the reality behind the illusion. And as it is falling off during this time, what do you see? a deep truth about yourself, your relationships, the external world. It is an opening of the third eye. And I am sitting in front of this image, I mean, move a little bit, that is very much about an open third eye and the brow chakra and that indigo color. You know, an indi you know the, the third eye, when an open third eye does not mean just clairvoyance. It's about the ability to read between the lines to what is true and what is not. And, um, and because behind the illusion, there is the, the truth. The, and behind the illusion is there are many realities and your perception of your reality and, and your perception of reality is your experience of reality. And know this is true for everyone. Now, uh, I want to show you, um, is there anything else I want to say about that third eye opening? Because it's so powerful when we can finally see through the truth and it gives us peace of mind, even if it is a difficult truth that unveils for us. There is an unveiling on a personal level, as well as a collective level going on. All right, I want to show you this great image. Uh, uh, it's small, but I liked it because of what it actually shows. This is the Eye of Ra, okay? And I, I was going to call this the Eye of Ra, but I decided to call it Third Eye Opening. But it's the Eye of Ra is the all-powerful Eye of the Sun that sees everything. And to know that it was often placed above doorways or entrances to temples in Egypt. This is the, this, I should say, this is Egypt. Ra is the sun. So it's the eye of the sun, the all powerful sun that sees everything. And he, this image is spreading its light over the, uh, one of the pyramids in Giza. But as I said, in ancient Egypt, it was placed over doorways or entrances. I actually have one over my own doorway. And so that no one could escape its watchful eye. It also represents all life. Since without the sun, we would not be able to exist as life force, as well as destruction. You know, Sekhmet came back as the eye of Raj. That was another name for her. Um, and so if you did something wrong, the eye of Ra would see you and punish you. Sekhmet incarnated at the, as the eye of Ra to act as a leveling effect to bring the world back in balance. And it's kind of like that thing of being aligned with what is true. Because every day, you know, is kind of like you, you wake up with yourself. You see yourself in the mirror. That is kind of like the eye of Ra who sees everything. It is the part of you that really sees everything and knows the real truth. The eye of Ra is now upon us, showing us what is out of balance we do, but we don't need Sekhmet to bring the destruction of Raw. We can bring our world back in balance ourselves. I believe that's what I'm hoping anyway. All right. All right. So. All right. So the eye of Raw. All right. So now the next thing we're going to talk about is Mercury square Uranus and in mutual reception with the sun and trine Chiron. So Mercury, of course, is God of the mind and the ruler of Virgo. And is in what, what I explained was it is a mutual reception with the sun in Virgo. So we've got Mercury in Leo, which is ruled by the sun. And we've got the sun in Virgo, which is ruled by Mercury. Okay. So 
So it works like a conjunction. So it gives us increased power. Mercury in Leo is creative and self-confident with a desire to be seen and heard. The shadow is dogmatic. Coming into a square with Uranus. Uranus, um, you know, is, is shakes everything up. It's about change. It, um, wherever we're stuck. So wherever we're stuck in our thinking, Uranus comes along and shakes us out of our comfort zone. So we may have some uncomfortable truths come to light. Maybe something, and you know, being dogmatic is being aligned with your one's beliefs no matter what not being open to new perspectives, okay? And so there may be something we've always believed that we find out is not true. So we may have an inner struggle coming to terms with that. And like I said, this can happen in our personal life. It can happen in the external world. It can happen in the collective. It cracks our consciousness open to see different perspectives and to be able to see solutions that we had not seen before. To get downloads is it, kind of like the, whenever Uranus is around, it's like the time is ripe for some new ideas. Whenever Mercury and Uranus are around, the time is ripe for some new ideas to enter the field and to enter our consciousness. And as the veil is lifted, we can see the bigger picture and begin to see how things fit together in ways we could not imagine possible before. And with the opening of the eye of Ra, it is the opening of the power of the all-seeing eye. But we need the critical thinking skills and discernment of Virgo. Because once our consciousness is awakened, and then we can see clearly how to respond and what that means in your life. Yeah, so and you, once your third eye is awakened, um, we can we can kind of say the eye of Ra and the third eye are very similar concepts because it is about starting to see more of the reality behind the illusion. Okay. Uh, we are conscious co-creators of our life and how to work with this in the quantum field to create our own reality because how we choose to respond is what matters, not just what you see. What you see, you see the the veil lifts and you have the courage to really look at what it is showing you, then what matters most is then how you respond. Cause we can just shut right back down and say, no, I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm not gonna believe this. I'm, I'm gonna believe the old thing, the thing that is comfortable rather than growing our edges or Uranus asks us to push our edges uh, in our perception of the world. Uranus brings in how we work in the quantum field to determine our reality and it was created by the choices we make. All right. So as the veil falls, we are able to change our perspective, then which changes our perception. And as our perce and our perception is our reality, it's the experience that of reality that we have. And if we make choices from fear, we are still living in 3D we will have an opportunity to make choices based in love, which is more of a fifth dimensional reality. And of course, trying uh, Mercury, trying Chiron, which is also conjunct Eris, um, is the importance of having the courage to speak the truth of what we see in the world, to be able to acknowledge it and then speak it. All right, we still have Saturn square Jupiter. Um, like I said, this is a cyclic thing and it is Saturn square Jupiter is bringing in, uh, it, it's destabilizing for the old structures, but it allows for the new structures to come in with many possibilities, but we have to release our own doubt. Saturn is often related to doubt and to start trusting the process. All right. Pluto returns to 29 degrees of Capricorn and is semi-square Saturn. Pluto entered Capricorn on November 27, 2008. This will be the last time Capricorn, uh, Pluto will be in Capricorn for approximately 248 years. The last time Pluto was in Capricorn was during the American Revolution, okay? So, and we are still in the midst of our Pluto return due to the tilt of the earth and the precession of the equinoxes. Um, 
it, it's important to what we're actually looking at is a measurement of where let's say where pluto was in the sky at the moment uh, of our declaration of independence 248 years ago or however long ago that was i think that's right um so by the precession of the equinoxes, as we measure where Pluto is, it is actually at one degrees of Aquarius. It is, is kind of shifted. It, it, the precession of the equinoxes shifts the placement. Of, it's basically more about our relationship. It changes our relationship by, by one degree every 72 years is the best way to say that. All right. Um, and so I feel like this Pluto return for the United, and the last one will happen in 2025, is that we, is very much about the transformation of this country. We are still in the chrysalis of the butterfly. It's a shaman, like a shamanic dismemberment where we are being taken apart as a nation before we can put back together in a new form. It is all part of the decay and the crumbling of the old paradigm. But Pluto is like, it's an outer planet whose movements are slow, but when catalyzed can be like a volcano when it is activated, releasing all the debris that lies below the surface. Pluto brings in the personal as well as collective unconscious. Capricorn is ruled by Saturn, which is structure in our lives, the bones of our civilization, uh, of the current paradigm. So coming into this semi-square with Saturn, which also represents consensus reality, because in Pisces, the structures are already dissolving and reality is shifting. But Pluto will accelerate the process, I believe, during this election cycle. Pluto goes direct mid-November, right after the election. And so I, I'm going to share again the Sabian symbol for 29 degrees of Capricorn. And as we talked about, it's an anoretic degree, which means it's the last degree. It's a degree of crisis. It's, it's like the last chance saloon to really, you know, get this right. And Pluto in Capricorn, you know, Pluto, like I said, it... It uh, <clears throat> destabilizes structures. It actually is called a destructuring agent, and um, or it could be called an agent of destruction. Okay, all right. So the Sabian symbol is directors of a large firm meet in secret conference. Well, we know this is going on. The veil is being lifted on who really sits in this firm of world government. Some might call it the new world order. It's also lifting the veil on our food regulatory agencies who have become corrupted by agency capture. It's like the fox guarding the hen house. And as people start to inform themselves about the poisons, the veil lifts and we are able to change this situation. Uh, it's about, and it's more than just about the food. The food is, the food is super important because food is who we are. And if we're being slowly poisoned, we're not living our best life. And it's so important to know that here in the United States, that much of our food would not is not allowed in other countries. Anyway, but it's important to remember the external world is a reflection of our inner world. We must take care of our bodies and love ourselves to have a government that does the same for us. All right, now just a couple more things. We have Mars at 28 degrees, 56 minutes of Gemini. It is square Neptune and conjunct the star Polaris. Uh, Mars is our direction in life. It's where to take action, which may require courage. And when it is in a square to Neptune, it may feel like we don't know what to do. We and so the only way forward is to trust our inner guidance and follow the energy, which takes courage because it is times of great uncertainty. I don't, this is, I, it's very much about recognizing that we are in the midst of a paradigm shift and great uncertainty as the old is crumbling and the new is coming in and the stars are giving this guidance of how to navigate this time because the, Old paths and ways of moving forward may not be available anymore. Okay. Now, Mars is conjunct the star Polaris. Polaris is the North Star. It is a star of guidance. It has been the star that has guided navigators all through uh, time. Now, Polaris has not always been the North Star. 
It has been, other stars have been the North Star, but the, the North, the meaning of the North Star is guidance. And now Polaris is our North Star. And the North and Polaris is about teaching, about it, it is a, 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 a star that carries great wisdom. And the teaching is about unity, consciousness, and wholeness. It can help us return to the original design for Earth of unity and diversity and to help Earth move out of polarity consciousness. And I just saw that <laughs> there is a, uh, a SpaceX is launching today and the it is called uh, Polaris Dawn. I thought that was so interesting, you know, to have uh, the word Polaris in this new space launch. And it's apparently all commercial. Um, this is commercial. It is the first time it's not been all astronauts from the government, but those have been, been uh, but uh, civilian, C civilian astronauts. Okay, and it's kind of more like more like Aquarius, civilian astronauts. Anyway, and there is part of a program called uh, the Dragon Spacecraft. It's called a Dragon Spacecraft that they're actually flying, but the name of the mission is Polaris Dawn. I think that was just so interesting. Anyway, so the south, I want to go just the last thing, which is the south node of the moon is conjunct Venus in Libra. And the north node in Aries is conjunct Neptune in Pisces. I feel like the meaning of this is so much about healing the divide between us. Venus in her own sign of Libra is about inner peace and relationships with others. And a friend of mine recently created a group. And I'm just going to quote what she said here. I Because I've asked to join. I want to be part of this group. It says, I recently helped initiate a community circle of people that want to talk about, in quotation marks, the real truth as we hear of what's really going on in the world while acknowledging that no one really knows for sure. <laughs> so it is having discussions, but we discussed deeply in respectful and profound sharing so that we can all be teachers for each other and support each other. It is time to connect face to face with others or in the face to face, you know, we can still do it on Zoom, but it's really important to meet up in person, too. But we need to be able to connect and create community to navigate the storms and to create the new world and to heal the divide. And it is a manipulated divide. It's not necessarily there. It's very manipulated by the media. And it's so important to recognize that and to not lose friends over what is happening in the external world. And so the North Node is at six degrees of Aries conjunct Neptune and Pisces. Of course, the is it 29 degrees of Pisces, which is not only the last degree of Pisces, but the last degree of the Zodiac. And it's where we're asked to actually live the teaching of the age of Pisces. And it is that of love and oneness, that we are love and carry the divine spark of creator in our hearts in each one of us. It is a message of wholeness and unity consciousness. And a remembrance of our own true divine nature is the reality behind the illusion. It is conjunct the star Shayat in Pisces, which is about being a receiver and transmitter of love. And I'm going to close with the Sabian symbol for this 29 degrees of Pisces because it's so powerful. It is a majestic rock formation resembling a face is idealized by a boy who takes it as his ideal of greatness. And as he grow up, begins to look like it. So it's about becoming our own ideal, that we can become who we envision as individuals, as well as a collective. And our world can become what we envision, but we must live the idea for it to become real. The more we live in our own true divine nature, the more the world around us will reflect that back to us. And that is the shift into the fifth dimension and the creation of a new earth. All right. Blessings to all. Have a wonderful month. 
If you like this video, please check like and subscribe. It really is helpful to me. And if you're interested in a reading, I have my information in the description box below. All right. Once again, blessings to all and namaste.